Learning to rightly divide the, how to study the Bible in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Dito po makikita natin na sa ating pag-aaral ay, ay uh, napakahalaga po na mayroon po tayong guidelines or guide ng ating pag-aaral katulad nga po ng uh, uh, sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo kay Timothy, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ano ba ang salitang rightly dividing? Ito ay galing sa word na orthotomio, cutting the straight line. So, mayroon pong guide. Pag sinasabing cutting the straight line, ito po ay isang engineering term na ginagamit ni Apostol Pablo. At sa pag-aaral ay napakahalaga po ito na bilang guide ng ating pag-aaral, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, kung ganun po ang ating uh, uh, gagawin, i-adapt po natin ang kaniyang uh, ang kanyang uh, principles or prinsipyo sa kanyang uh, pag-aaral katulad nga ni Timothy ay kanyang uh, sinabihan at kung alamin po natin ang context na ito si Timothy ay mayroon po siyang mga kaharap na mga uh, parisiyo, religious leaders at kung uh, alamin po natin ay talagang napakatindi po dahil uh, Si Timothy ay hindi po talaga siya uh, sabihin nating uh, veterano patungkol po sa mga defense uh, tungkol sa katuruan pero sa tulong na sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So pag sinasabi nating uh, word of truth, ito po ay uh, patungkol sa ating uh, Biblia from Genesis to Revelation. Yan po ay word of truth. Uh, Genesis to Revelation, uh, yan po ay word of truth. Ngayon, ang, uh, para maunawaan po natin from Genesis to Revelation ay uh, alamin po natin ang timeline na mayroon pong time pass. Uh, time past uh, but now and ages to come time past in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 but now Ephesians 2 13 and ages to come uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 so yun po yung ating uh, timeline timeline so paano po natin maunawaan at maintindihan ano ba yung mga books under the uh, mga books under the time past so, mga books under the time past ay uh, from Genesis to the book of John. And then, mga books naman under the but now ay ang uh, Romans to Philemon. And then, uh, mga books or scriptures under the ages to come ay ang Hebrews to Revelation. Bakit hindi na isama yung book of Acts? Ang book of Acts naman, ito ay transitional period. Okay? Transitional period na doon po ma makikita natin ang history ng kingdom program and then the grace program at kung papaano na diminish or papaano unti-unting na nag-transition ang uh, dispensation of grace from kingdom to grace so doon po sa book of Acts yan sa Acts uh, 1 to 12, ito po ay patungkol sa kingdom and then 13 to 28, doon po ang, uh, ang transitional period. So, kung papaano na nag-transition ang kingdom to grace. So, dito po, pag-uusapan natin, learning to, uh, to rightly divide, how to study the Bible. Napakahalaga po ito, pag-aaralan natin ang Biblia, hindi po basta-basta ang pag-aaralan natin. Uh, kung anong mabasa natin ay agad-agad nating i-apply, agad-agad nating i-adapt na ito ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon. Hindi po ganun mga kapatid dahil ang Biblia, uh, ang, ang mga scriptures na yan ay isinulat na mayroong sinulatan. At wag po nating uh, direct angkinin yung sulat na hindi para sa atin. Kaya nga mayroon tayong pag-aaral na 
uh, ganitong klaseng pag-aaral bilang guide po. Okay, para hindi po tayo malito dahil ang pag ang pag-aaral sa salita ng Diyos ay minsan nakakalito. At kung hindi tayo maging maingat ay uh, ay magkaroon tayo ng tinatawag na confusion or hindi natin maunawaan. Kaya right, rightly dividing the word of truth, ito po ang pinakasusi ng lahat upang maunawaan natin ang Biblia. So 2 Timothy 2.15 ay napakahalaga po na kailangan po nating aralin ang salita ng Diyos para tayo ay maging approved workman and maging approved na workman approved sa ating Panginoon at papaano rightly dividing the word of truth ayan po ang ating uh, tatalakayan dito po sa ating pag-aaral number one right division requires workmen so men with a right heart having the right book asking the right question so dito po pag sinasabi na ning right division requires workmen. Sino ba yung mga tinatawag workmen? Ito po yung mga believers na tinatawag body of Christ. And then i i, i group of believers with a right heart. Pag sinasabi nating right heart, mayroon tayong good motive, uh, right attitude and then character. So doon po then having the right book. Kailangan po natin ang right book dito ang Biblia okay, right book ang ating uh, Biblia asking the right questions syempre, kailangan po na mayroong right questions no, para mas uh, masagot po ng maayos so in the right context considering na uh, right context pag sinasabi natin right context, ay tignan po natin kung ang context ay uh, ay na patungkol ba ito sa panahon noon under the time pass sa panahon natin ngayon under the but now or the ages to come so consider po natin yung context ng ating pag-aaral halimbawa sa Hebrews 1 1 and 2 basahin po natin ang Hebrews chapter number 1 Hebrews chapter 1 verses uh, 1 1 and 2 dito po sa ating uh, version God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoke unto us by his son who whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds So pansinin po natin dito na ang Panginoon ay ang context dito po ang Panginoon under the time pass ay nagsalita siya uh, sa mga fathers for fathers and then later on mga prophets and then the, the uh, sa kanyang anak unto us his son. So yun po ang context ibig sabihin hindi natin pwedeng uh, uh, i, -i direct Uh, apply o angkinin itong mga bagay na ito dahil uh, is specific po very specific na ang Panginoon ay nagsalita sa kanila hindi sa atin yun po ang context and we are told to study to do work to discern the times of doctrines in uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 2 uh, 2 Timothy chapter Uh, number 2, 15 to 18. 15 to 18, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profan and vain bubblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Verse 17, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Pilatus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and ever true that fight of some. Ito si Jimenez and Pilatus ay mga religious leaders at uh, ayon sa kanilang paniniwala na tapos na ang resurrection. So, ito ay isa sa mga uh, kaharap ni Timothy, mga religious leaders na ito. Pero ang good news si Timothy ay hindi po nabago ang kanyang pananaw 
ang kanyang paniniwala nung na-encounter niya ang mga religious leaders nito. Bakit? Si Timothy ay pinaliwanag niya ang salita ng Diyos. Ipinaliwanag niya ayon sa kanyang uh, natutunan kay Apostle Paul. Kaya sabi noon, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ito po ang pinaka uh, uh, tools to discern para ma-discern ang isang uh, teaching kung ito ay talagang uh, doctrinally correct or sa- mayroong sound. Dinatawag na sound doctrine. Pag sinasabi natin sound doctrine ay hindi po pwedeng mahaluan ng ibang doktrina o hindi pwedeng haluan ng iba pang teaching. Kahit nasa Bible, kahit mababasa natin, kaya may kasabihan na scripturally but not dispensationally. Mababasa nga kahit somewhere in the Bible, yes, scriptural, pero hindi naman dispensational. Pag ganun po ay uh, hindi natin masasabi na ang katuruan na yan ay, uh, ay uh, matibay na katuruan dahil possible ang, ang, ang teaching na mababasa lang natin through the scripture possible na hindi para sa atin kung idaan natin sa uh, basic rules ng biblical interpretation. It takes uh, work to study out God's revelations and dispensations from the Bible. According to Schofield, meron siyang seven dispensation but uh, never mention Ephesians chapter 1, 10 to 11 and some ex, uh, are extra-biblical. Dahil ito si Schofield ay ang kanyang uh, presentation ay seven dispensation. Kaya pagdating dito po, hindi niya na-mention ang Ephesians 1.10 to 11 regarding the dispensation of the fullness of time na in, in, in the future, uh, ang citizens in heaven or uh, those who are in heaven and those who are in earth will be one in Christ. So, hindi naman ano, uh, na, i, uh, na, i, na na mention ito ni Schofield kasi si Schofield ay ang uh, tinutukan lang po niya na magsama uh, ang citizens in heaven and citizens on earth ay sa millennium. So, yun po ang kanyang uh, explanation doon. So, in the Old Testament, uh, ang Old Testament or law does not start in Genesis. Isa po sa mga uh, tatalakay natin ay ang tungkol po sa starting ng uh, Old Testament. Kasi karamihan or traditionally, ang Old Testament ay sinasabi na sa, sa Genesis nag-start. O nag-start sa Genesis. At ang Mateo ay nag-start naman sa I mean, ang New Testament ay nag-start sa Book of Matthew, Chapter 1. So, ito po ay uh, uh, pinaniniwalaan ng karamihan mga Bible preacher, believing people, o mga ministers, na ang pagsinasabing New, uh, Old Testament ay nag-start sa Genesis up to Malachi. And then, New Testament naman is start from the Book of Matthew to the Book of Revelation. So, ngayon po, aralin natin using this right uh, uh, this uh, method rightly dividing uh, the word of truth kung, kung sa Genesis nag-start ng Old Testament ito naman ang tanong sino ang sino ang binigyan ng Old Testament so sasabihin natin si Moses yes si Moses ba ay nandoon na siya sa Genesis 1.1 Kailan lang ba dumating si Moses? Nandun na ba siya sa Genesis 1.1 para masabi natin na uh, Old Testament ang uh, Genesis, uh, start ng Old Testament ay Genesis chapter 1? Okay. So, si Genesis, uh, sa, sa, si Moses, okay, si Moses ay uh, dumating po siya sa Exodus na. Sa Exodus na. Ito pa ang tanong. Nung ipinanganak ba si Moses ay nag-start din po ang Old Testament? Hindi. Nung si Moses ay 80 years old na, doon lang po ibinigay sa kanya ang Old Testament. So, ibig sabihin, before, before, before 80 years old, 
ay wala pa po yung Old Testament. Ayan. So, yun po yung mapapansin natin. Kung hindi natin gagamitin ang rightly dividing method on how to study the Bible, hindi po natin maunawaan. Parang na-adapt lang din natin ang mga ang 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 uh, general na na paniniwala. Oh. Isa pa, yung New Testament. Bakit sinabi natin na hindi nag-start sa Matthew chapter 1? Dahil nga ito naman ang uh, ang uh, ang ang tanong diyan. Kung nag-start sa sa Matthew chapter 1 ang New Testament, ano ba ang New Testament? Ano ba ang New Testament? Ang New Testament po ito po yung regarding sa sa ang basis po din is the blood of Jesus Christ. Anong sinasabi doon sa 1 uh, Corinthians 11? 1 Corinthians 11:25 After the same manner also he took the cup when he had sobbed saying this cup is the new testament in my blood. So ano daw? Testament in my blood. So, kung pag-uusapan natin ang testament ay hindi pala sa, sa Matthew chapter 1, kundi doon sa, sa cross, doon sa death ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo nung kanyang naibuhos ang kanyang dugo or nung siya ay namatay sa madaling salita, salita after his death, doon po ang nag-start ang testament doon sa cross, doon sa blood ni Christ. Doon sa kanyang death. Basahin natin ang Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. 15 to 17. And for this cause he is the mediator. Referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ the mediator of the new Testament that by means of death for the redemptions of the transgressions that were under the first testament the which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator then verse 17 okay verse 17 for a testament is of force after men are dead The otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So, nung nabubuhay ang testator or nung buhay pa ang Panginoong Hesus, yun po ay hindi New Testament. Ayon sa ating binasa ay mag-effect lang po yung testament na yun kung mamatay ang testator. So, nung hindi namatay ang Panginoong Yesus under the Old Testament. Under the Old Testament. Kaya ang Panginoong Yesus ay nag-ministry siya, nagtuturo siya under the Old Testament, hindi po nag na nagtuturo siya under the New Testament. Dahil nga, hindi pa siya namatay bilang testator. Kung mamatay siya, yun doon po mag-effect ang New Testament. Ayon dito po sa ating binasa. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John ay record po ito life and ministry ng ating Panginoong Hesus. Therefore, hindi siya under the New Testament. Dahil ang Testament nag-start lang po after the death of the testator. Next, God's promise of earthly dominion. Ang Panginoon mayroon siyang promise earthly dominion kay Adam, Noah, Abraham. So ang pinag-uusapan po diyan the earthly dominion na ito ay ipinapangaral. Ang earthly dominion na ito ay uh, i- itinuturo or even the time of Adam, Noah, Abraham ang ang kanilang promise regarding sa earth Okay? Regarding sa kingdom. 
Punta natin ang Genesis chapter number 1. Genesis chapter 1 uh, verse 28. And God blessed them, them, and God said unto them, Be prosperous and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth. Move us upon the earth, so that's the the promise of the Adam from Adam, Noah, and Abraham. Another in Genesis twelve, uh, Genesis twelve three. Genesis chapter twelve verse number three, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee. Shall all families of the earth be blessed, referring to the earthly dominion? In this kingdom, a promise was also preached. Ang kingdom na ba ito ang dominion ay nangyari na nakamta na ba? Hindi pa po. The kingdom had not come yet. Hindi pa po nangyari ito. Na ipangaral pero hindi pa nangyari. Kailan mangyari ang kingdom? Pagdarating ang Panginoong Yesus, second time. Acts 1.6 Acts chapter 1 verse number, uh, number 6 When they therefore were come together, they asked of Him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So, tinatanong kung kailan ba ma-restore ang kingdom na ito ang earthly dominion ito sa millennium. Then Acts 11.19 Acts uh, 11.19 Now they which were scattered abroad upon the, per upon the, the persecution that arose about, about Stephen traveled as far as uh, Pinus and Cyprus Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Dahil ang kingdom ay ipinangako, ipinapangaral doon lang sa mga Israel, to the Jews only. Uh, pag uh, sinasabi natin the kingdom gospel, ang recipient po ng kingdom gospel ay ang Israel, hindi po mga Gentiles. Okay? Then, ano pa? Sa Romans 11. Romans chapter 11 verse uh, 25 to 27 For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and so, shall, uh, and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their their sins. So, sino sila? Referring to the the, the nation of Israel. Ito po ay isang programa ng ating Panginoon para sa Israel. Sa ngayon, temporarily cut off ang Israel, pero after the rapture, ay ibabalik po sa kanila ang programa. After the rapture, ang programa ng Panginoon para sa bayang Israel ay i-resume. Dahil ngayon, temporarily stop ang programa ng ating Panginoon sa bayang Israel. Paul was given a dispensation of grace nung na-stop temporarily ang uh, ang programa para sa Israel. Ito naman inireveal ng ating Panginoon kay Apostle Paul ang dispensation of grace ang nag-interrupt sa prophetic plan. In, in uh, Paul was given dispensation of grace different from the law. So this program ay iba po sa law. Bakit po? Dahil dito po ay uh, ay uh, pinag-usapan ang na hindi na tayo under the law. Dito po hin 
ang ang issue na po dito ay hindi na po law kundi ay ang grace ng ating Panginoon basahin po natin ang uh, ang Ephesians 2:11 to 15 where, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called and circumcision by that which is called the circumcisions in the flesh made by hands that at the time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, he who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Verse 15, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, For to make in himself of twin one new man, so making peace. Hindi na po issue dito ang batas. Hindi na po pinag-uusapan dito kung anong magagawa ng batas. Kundi ang issue na po dito ay ang work ng ating Panginoon. Kung paano pinag-isa ang Jew and Gentile sa panahon na ito. At ano ang dapat paniniwalaan at sundin. Kung, kung ang batas pa ba or ang, ang uh, uh, grace ng ating Panginoon. na inirebeld ng Diyos, ng ating point kay Apostol Pablo. So, the Bible workman who wants to avenge Shem, Shem needs to rightly divide. Okay? The Bible workman who wants to avenge Shem needs to rightly divide. So, may mga tinatawag contradiction, pero hindi naman talaga contradiction kung uh, i-apply natin ang rightly dividing tools on how to study the Bible. So the need to rightly divide comes from difference created by God's dispensations. Okay? So yun po, kailangan natin yun. Then the difference are not mistakes. So, the fool in, in Proverbs 26.4.5 and then the creation in Genesis 1 and 2 and Job 38.4 doon po makikita natin na may mga differences pero hindi ibig sabihin na mali. Example, the traffic lights. One light is red, the other is green. And this is not a mistake. The Bible has contradiction but not mistakes. May mga contradiction. Kung papansin natin, mga seming contradiction. Pero hindi po mistake. Hindi po mali. In Jer Jeremiah 9, 15, 16 and also in Jeremiah 31, 10 to 12. Kung babasahin niyo po doon, may uh, seming contradiction. Pero using the This uh, method of uh, study, rightly dividing the word of truth, ma ma maunawaan po natin na walang contradiction sa Bible. In Romans 4.5, in, in Romans 5.1, also in James 2.24, doon din makikita natin na parang contradictory, contradiction. Okay, but don't change the verses. Hindi po natin pwedeng baguhin kung ano ang nilalaman. Dito po ay bigyan ko lang kayo ng basic rule ng biblical interpretation. Please. Uh, first consider uh, sino ba ang uh, ang uh, speaker at yung audience sino bang audience, sino bang nagsasalita or speaker ng uh, Romans 4 and then sa James 2 sino ba yung mga recipient so magkakaiba po ang, uh, ang uh, speaker magkakaibang recipient, hindi po par pwede nating pagsamahin yung magkaibang verse wag lang nating baguhin When we see a contradiction, divide it into its proper context and dispensation. Ganun po dapat ang gagawin natin. When we see a contradiction, ito po yung uh, suggestion. Divide it into its proper context and dispensation. Ngayon, maiwasan natin ang confusion. Example, eh, Exodus 20 verse 8, The Sabbath was mandated. Totoo ba na mandated ang Sabbath? Yes, kailan? Noon, basahin natin. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mandatory ba? Yes. Kailan ito? Noon. But now, but not now. Hindi po sa panahon natin ngayon. Pansinin natin ang Colossians 2.16 Colossians chapter 2 uh, verse 16 
Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Di ba? Wala na. Wala na po yun. Hindi na po sa panahon natin ngayon. So, uh, using a right division, doon po madali nating ma-identify kung ano yung, uh, yung sinasabi sa time past and then sinasabi sa but now. Pero kung hindi po natin uh, gamitin yung method na yon ng uh, pag-aaral ay malilito po, nakakalito po ang Bible. Okay? So, next, the circumcision in Genesis 17.11, Galatians 6.15, and what to eat, and ganun po, may mga, uh, may mga parang contradiction, pero ganun din po, Uh, ang ang gagawin po nyan, divide it into its proper context and dispensation. Madali na lang regarding sa pagkain, di ba? Noon, may mga pinagbawal, pero sa time ni Apostle Paul, under the but now, pwede. So, walang contradiction, depende po sa panahon, kung kailan at sino ang sinabihan. Should we be water baptized for repentance? Ayan. And why? In Matthew 3.11 and then Ephesians 4.5, doon po makikita natin ang, ang water baptism, baptism, ito po ay requirements sa bayang Israel, water baptized for repentance, ay ni-required po ito para sa bayang Israel, hindi po ni-required sa body of Christ, but we are baptized in into Christ. Okay? We are baptized into Christ sa pamagitan ng banal na Espiritu, uh, that the Spirit baptized us into Christ, pero sa Matthew 3.11, ang baptizer po dyan ay, ay uh, si John the Baptist using the water Uh, baptizing uh, those Israelites who repented para sila'y maging part. Okay? Yun po ay uh, requirements na sila'y makakapasok sa kingdom. Pero sa Ephesians 4.5, eh, hindi po ito water baptism, ito po ay spirit baptism, baptizing us into Christ. How to rightly divide? Nobody thinks that they wrongly divide. But the result of wrong division is confusion. The result of wrong division is confusion. Wala namang nag-isip ng wrongly divide. Ah, nag-isip ng right. Pero yun nga, ang result is wrong division, uh, confusion. There is a cure for denominational church confusion. Pauline right division. Yun po ang cure. Sa mga... Uh, confusion, denominational confusion or church confusion, ito po ang solution. Pauline right division. Ang kailangan po natin, rightly dividing the word of truth. One of the most significant divisions in your Bible, uh, Romans 16.25, prophecy, and then uh, Acts 3.21, uh, I mean Romans 16.25, ito po yung mystery, and then Acts 3.21, ito po yung prophecy. Eh, yung most significant division po ay ito. Hindi Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, basahin po natin ang uh, Romans 16.25 Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Pansinin po natin ito. Uh, um, the mystery which was kept Secret since the world began, bago palikhain ang sanlibutan, may isang programa, kaso lang na itago. Mystery. Punta tayo sa Acts 3.21. Kung parehas ba? Acts 3.21. Verse 21, Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. Sa Romans 16.25, kept secret since the world began. The mystery which was kept secret since the world began. And then the prophecy, the prophecy is spoke by the, the mouth of all his prophets, holy prophets, since the world began. So ang mystery program revealed to Apostle Paul ay uh, before the world began. Bago palikhain ang sanlibutan ay mayroon na pong programa, mystery lang po. Dito naman sa prophecy ay isang programa since the world began. Inirebeld ng ating Panginoon sa mga propeta. So, mayroong dalawang 
uh, program dito, the, the mystery program, kept secret uh, before the world began. Then another program, a prophetic program, since the world began. So, yun po ang kaibahan uh, sa dalawang program na ito. Ang uh, mystery program, ito po yung uh, heavenly program. Ang prophecy program, ito po yung earthly program para sa bayang Israel. See the contradiction again in Luke 24:44 and Acts 3:24 and Ephesians chapter 3 to, to 5 pero ulitin ko wala pong contradiction diyan kung i-apply po natin ang rightly dividing the word of truth pero kung hindi natin i-apply yon ay parang contradiction at hanggang ngayon parang contradiction pa rin Basahin natin in Luke Lok 24:44 Lok 24:44 And he said unto them this are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all the things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses okay in, in na, nakasulat sa law of Moses and the prophets and in the, in, in Psalms concerning me Okay, so I speak unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled. Written in the law of Moses. Punta tayo sa Ephesians 3, 2 to 5. Ephesians chapter 3, verses uh, 2 to 5. If you have heard of the dispensation of grace of God which given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I rose afore in few words, whereby... When you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in the other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is re now revealed unto his holy pro apostles and prophets by the Spirit. O, di ba? Parang contradiction. Kung titignan natin ay parang contradiction. Dahil ito po ay unsearchable. Hindi po, uh, po na-revealed sa panahon noon, pero now revealed to Apostle Paul na rebuild So, kung ano yung mga naka-record noon, yun ay prophecy. Kung ano naman ang inirebuild ng Panginoon kay Apostol Pablo, yun po yung mystery. At do, yun po ang programa kung saan doon po tayo. Okay? The dispensation of the grace of God. There is no prophecy of Christ and the mystery of Christ. Okay? There is the prophecy of Christ and the mystery of Christ. Kung prophecy of Christ, yes, mayroon. Ang mystery of Christ, mayroon din po. Uh, tungkol, kay, tungkol sa earthly ministry ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, yun po yung prophecy uh, of Christ. Then the mystery of Christ, yung uh, work naman po ng ating Panginoong uh, Heso Kristo na ang, hin, ang Jew and Gentiles ay pinag-isa. Sa prophecy of Christ naman, ang, is, ang Panginoong Isus ay maghahari sa bayang Israel. Ang mystery of Christ naman na ang mga hintel at ang mga Israel pinag-isa pinag -isa at tinatawag na body of Christ kung sila'y maniniwala sa gospel of the cross or the preaching of the cross. Another is the gospel Paul had in Galatians 2.7 in Ephesians 6.19. They did not know in Luke 18.34. Kung papansinin po natin, uh, ang gospel na ipinapangaral ni Apostle Paul ay hindi nalaman na alam ng mga apostles na mention pero hindi nila naunawaan at ito po ay inirevealed ng ating Panginoon kay Apostol Pablo. Kaya nung nagtuturo, ang, nagtuturo si Apostol Pablo ay hindi naunawaan ng mga dosing apostol. Ang tungkol sa preaching of the cross. The, 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 the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ na ipinapangaral ni Apostol Paul, hindi naunawaan ng mga apostol. It's problem when gospel contradictions are unresolved. Matthew 19:17. Ito po ay talagang problem kung ganon uh, unresolved. Okay, Unres gospel contradiction are unresolved. Matthew 19:17. Matthew 19. Okay, verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Dito po mapansin natin 
na ang ang good, ang mabait, ang mabuti ay ang Panginoon lang. Siya lang yung good, righteous. Oh, papaano naman ang sinasabi sa Titus 3:5? Titus uh, 3:5 Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, save us. By washing of regeneration, new, renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, kung mapapansin po natin dito, ay parang contradiction, hin- kag hindi natin uh, talagang ma- ma-resolve, mananatiling unresolved ito. We're using the right division, ay madali lang po. Dito sa panahon ng uh, Matthew 19.17, yes, pinag-usapan kasi ang Old Testament. Kaya uh, sinasabing ang ang good ang ang righteous lang or ang uh, matuwid lang or mabait lang or ano pa ang term ay ang Panginoon lang wala walang tao na good maliban sa Panginoon pero under this present time the dispensation of grace we are made righteous we are made right good in the sight of God So ma ma masol po ang tinatawag contradiction If God continued prophecy, if God continued prophecy, right division would be less important than the timing. Okay? Ganun po ang mangyayari kung continuous po ang prophecy ng ating Panginoon. Ulitin ko po ang uh, prophetic plan in t- temporarily na na-stop, na putol, at uh, dito po tayo sa dispensation of the grace of God revealed. Inirevel ng, inirevel ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo kay Apostol Pablo. But God has now rescinded some of what He said before. Uh, kung anong sinasabi niya noon to emphasize His grace. So, uh, kaya ang mga kakaturuan under the time pass ay, ay uh, na-diminish or rescinded para naman ma-emphasize yung grace. Halimbawa, in Romans 6, uh, 6.14, Uh, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And then uh, Romans 10.4, for, for Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believe. So, uh, yun po ang purpose kung bakit na ang, ang katuruan noon ay temporarily na-diminish para ma-emphasize po ang grace ng ating Panginoon. Even Israel, Israel is fallen in Romans 11.12, and then salvation come. Uh, come unto the Gentiles in Galatians 6.15 So, ano po ang nangyari? We are now a citizen in heaven in, in Philippians 3.20 Right division is important because God has now revealed the mystery. Ganun po yon. Right division, kailangan po ma- maunawaan, napaka-importante ito because God has now revealed the mystery. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8, A failure to rightly divide will stunt your growth, lessen your understanding of God's will, cause confusion about how you think God operates, and will distort the gospel. Tama po. Failure to rightly divide will stunt your growth. Kasi may mga seeming contradiction sa Bible. Pag hindi po natin nakita iyan, ay ganun po ang mangyayari. Lessen your understanding of God's will, then, magdudulot po ng confusion about how you think God operates. Paano nag-operate ang Panginoon, kay maraming ma confuse nag-doubt, paano nag-work, and then, will distort the gospel. Ganun po ang magiging resulta. So, introducing, rightly dividing the word of truth, is, uh, ito po yung uh, susi, is the key to understanding the Bible. Napakaganda po ito. Mas uh, ma, maiwasan po natin ang confusion. Ito po ang susi ng lahat. And then you don't distort the gospel. Mas maipaliwanag natin ang gospel ng maayos. So napakahalaga talaga na uh, maunawaan natin ang ating itinuturo para hindi tayo ma and then yung mga listeners ay hindi nilipat. Hanggang dito lang ang ating pag-aaral. Salamat sa inyong uh, time na sinabaan ko po sa, uh, sa pag-aaral na ito. 